All right, three, two, and one. Well, good morning, Governor. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, John. So talk to us about this $2 billion surplus the state of Idaho is seeing and, and where that money is going to be going. Well, we didn't know it was $2 billion until, and that's a forecast to the end of, of June of next year, right? We ended last year with $1.4 billion, and now we're anticipating another $600 million this year. And, you know, prior to doing that forecast, uh, you know, people in Idaho have just been, the ravages of inflation have been everywhere. And I was leaning and I hinted that I wanted to do another tax rebate. But when we got, you know, the granular data up to 2 billion, that, that kind of locked it up for me. And then of course the school districts are having all kinds of added costs. And so to do, to address inflation, at both my citizens and my schools, we're incorporating that into one bill. So talk to us about more how we get that surplus, um, especially this year. I think this is one of the largest surpluses we've had in the state of Idaho. Oh yeah, it's a record. And, uh, and of course, we have been uh, very conservative in our budgeting in, in so many different ways, uh, year over year. Uh, and then the last few years, we filled up our rainy day fund. We're paying off the, what few bonds we had. We're paying off the bonds that we could. We're also addressing uh, maintenance needs in the uh, road area, particularly the road and bridge area. And so with all those things combined, uh, we, we are very comfortable uh, with, with what we're doing. Last year, we gave education a 12% raise uh, but they, they've got some real challenges. Uh, my priority is is literacy, and I, you know, we'll we will see probably by the time the legislature starts uh, the fruits of our labor in in working on increasing the literacy rate for our all children in Idaho. So you have called a special session. Talk to us more about what will be discussed in early September uh, and what we can expect uh, to hear from legislators. Well, a week from today, uh, the legislature will be here at the Capitol for a special session. Our constitution says that uh, that an extraordinary session that I call uh, needs to be for a specific issue. So we've got, we call it a, a draft bill uh, that will have a bill number uh, that the legislature will take up. And it's got a 10% rebate to every taxpayer in Idaho. It's got an increased minimum for people that uh, it'll be a minimum of $300 for an individual or 600 for a joint filer. We'll lower the rate going forward from six down to five, eight. And then we'll put three, 330 into K-12 and 80 into uh, our higher education system. So talk to us more about this tax rebate. I mean, how, how lucky are people, uh, the citizens of Idaho to receive this tax, pay, tax rebate? And I've heard you mention before um, that the inflation is really causing a lot of struggles for families in Idaho. Well, uh, this is a concept uh, that we picked up from the state of Indiana uh, years and years ago, they did this. So year before last, we gave everybody back 10%. This year, we gave everybody back 12%, but the minimum was only $75. And this year, we moved it up to 300 because of, you know, people with limited means, uh, where they, you know, they buy a lot of groceries, uh, whatever, fill in the blank, whatever it is. But the best way to help people is just to give them back their money. And how much money could people be seeing back in their bank accounts? Well, overall, it would be about half a billion dollars. Uh, that'll, that'll half the, the bill will set aside half a billion dollars to go out to the people of Idaho. When you're going into this um, special session, what is it looking like as far as support from both sides of the aisle? Well, you don't do this willy nilly. I've, uh, I've seen uh, Governor Kim Thorne, Governor Risch, Governor Otter do it. And in every instance, uh, we, you know, it, it's not like Brad had a good idea and just called up and said, come to town. We work out all the details of the legislation ahead of time. 
obviously the two committees, the two tax committees, uh, obviously <clears throat> all the stakeholders, the leadership. And right now we've got enough co-sponsors, but you can tell I'm knocking on wood. Uh, uh, right now we've got enough co-sponsors that we should be successful. Talk to us more about the money that's going into education, how much you guys are planning to invest this year in the state of Idaho. Well, this is 330 million that the legislature will appropriate starting in January. Uh, and of course, that will be on top of whatever else the legislature, or that's where they'll start from. Uh, but last year, uh, we put more than that in and then another 80 million into what we call the in-demand jobs, whether it be traditional higher education, North Idaho College, uh, uh, CTE, whatever it is, uh, the state board will make recommendations and then the legislature will appropriate. Have you heard back from your constituents on this proposed plan for the special session? Well, a little bit, but of course, as I traveled this last year, uh, when, when I was traveling, a lot of people were, were some of them were surprised. Uh, matter of fact, I know one of them said he got an envelope from the state tax commission, thought it was some kind of a notice, almost threw it out and opened it up. And there was a, a nice check in there. Uh, but it, it's, it's the best way for us to take our, our good fortune because our, our revenue is just, it literally last year, was 23% over what we forecast. If you spend all that money and the economy slows down, then you either got to raise taxes or significantly reduce spending. By being conservative as we have been, you give some of that money back and then you invest in, in roads, you invest in schools, you invest in behavioral health, you invest in all those areas that are the proper role of government, and but you don't get ahead of yourself to where if the revenue slows down, you're in trouble. I know you talk about uh, you know being conservative with the state of Idaho's money. Um, does the influx of people in the state of Idaho have anything to do with this surplus? Um, yes, it does. <clears throat> but of course, it also uh, is taxing on on the state. It's taxing on 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 cities and counties. And so we'll we'll continue to work with them, the cities and counties, and even the school districts. Uh, got some pretty good revenue sources from all the bills that Congress passed. And so, again, we're trying to figure out what's normal. What do we do to help that? We know that the rate of growth in Idaho is not normal. It's uh, it's over the top. And it's it's something that I, I think a lot of it is contrast between Idaho and particularly the three states <laughs> to the west of us is part of the reason where a lot of that growth. But a lot of my regulatory efforts, where we continue to make it easier for a small business or a medium-sized business to grow because we simplify and eliminate uh, unnecessary regulations, a lot of it is the quality of the workforce here in Idaho. Uh, there's a variety of reasons why Idaho's economy is so red hot. And real quick, before I let you go, Governor, anything else you want to say to your constituents up here in North Idaho? No, we're, we're excited. Uh, this is the right thing to do to give people their money back and to continue to invest in education. It's just inflation, you know, inflation affects people differently. And the best way, whether it's you spend a lot of it on fuel or you spend a lot of it on, on, on food or other necessities or healthcare, just give people their money back and then they can decide how best to use it. All right, Governor, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks, John.